On Thursday, Secretary of State Blinken announced sanctions against Iran's ministers of the interior and communications and five other officials of the Islamic Republic, all for their roles in the crackdown against protesters. The unrest was sparked by the death of Mahsa Amini, a 22-year-old woman. Mahsa had been arrested by the morality police, accused of violating Iran's dress code. And at the forefront of the protests against her killing are women and young people. I want to bring in Roya Hakakian to help us understand the movement, its meaning and its power. She is an Iranian-American writer. Roya, welcome. Um, I wanted to ask you first, um, what was your, what are your impressions just watching these protests? What is it that you are noticing? Um, I'm noticing something I haven't seen since 1979. Um, some of the images that are coming out of Iran are very much reminiscent of um, the country that I remember, the turmoil that I remember from 1978 and 1979. Um, kids were ripping up the images of the Shah out of their textbooks. They were tearing down, um, you know, the images of the supreme leader this time around from their classrooms. Um, there is a unified movement throughout the country that is focused on a singular slogan we have never heard, which is woman, life, freedom. And I think it signals uh, toward a major, major shift um, from all the past demonstrations that we've seen before. What I noticed, uh, Roya, was that they were tearing up uh, pictures not just of Ayatollah Khamenei, the current supreme leader, but of Ayatollah Khomeini, the founding supreme leader uh, of, of Iran, which strikes me as almost getting to the core of the regime's legitimacy. Precisely. You're exactly right. Um, no demonstration in the past, no protest, no group that had come out um, to, to object to the regime had ever gone this far. And this moment where they are saying not only the president, not only the current supreme leader, but the very founder of this regime is the very person that we no longer want to identify with, I think is, is the signal that we have reached a point of no return, that the nation has crossed a boundary that it had never crossed before. Why do you think Masa Amini, her case, uh, why did it trigger this? Because she's every woman. Um, because, um, first of all, she was uh, a Kurdish woman. She was in Tehran with her brother for a visit. Um, she was not an activist. She was not in any shape or form political. Um, the fact that she was every woman, the fact that she was ordinary, is the reason why everybody is, I think, so up in arms, because um, she could be me, she could be anybody's sister, she could be anybody's mother. Um, and, and if that happened to her, then no woman in Iran could possibly be safe. I think I read uh, somewhere uh, that you wrote that it's, Iranians have tried protesting and uh, asking for reform in so many ways. You know, there was the Green Movement, they elected a reformist president, uh, in fact, twice, Khatami and Rouhani, and nothing seems to work. Um, is this, do you think it's fair to say this is now for at least these Iranians a call not for reform but, but revolution? This is way past reform. Um, people gave reform uh, a lot of time to work, and it didn't. So they have turned to revolution, and that's precisely what's happening in Iran at the moment. In the past, these protests have not led to anything. Um, can they succeed this time? The demonstrators are saying that they don't intend to go home, and they don't intend to stop. The regime, the system, has entirely lost its legitimacy. Now, whether the demonstrators succeed or not will in part depend on the support that the international community and the United States will provide them. And they should have every incentive, especially America, to do just that. For 40 plus years, the United States has been waiting for Iranians to stop burning American flags, burning the U.S. Uh, effigies of Uncle Sam, um, and, and not considering the United States, not calling the United States the great Satan. Well, um, these demonstrators are out on the streets, and what they're saying 
uh, the slogans that they're chanting is, um, our enemy is right here. They lie when, when they say it's the United States. We have reached a point that we have always wanted to reach as Americans. Iranians uh, have foregone of the hostility that they've had with us. Now, um, will we hear the voice of the people as Americans? Will we side with the people and do the right thing this time to correct all of our past mistakes as Americans in Iran and, and other places in the Middle East where we identify ourselves, we side with the tyrants? Um, and, and do we hear uh, the plight of the people? That will depend on us. And if we do that, if we write the things that we have done wrong historically, then the demonstrators will certainly have a shot at, at accomplishing what they've come out on the streets to accomplish. Roya, thank you so much. That was very, very insightful. Thank you.